an the terms of an has to go to zero yeah? they have to get smaller and smaller uh, so for example in the case uh, of geometric series for a few weeks or two we can immediately say that it diverges because these terms are not going to zero they are going they are getting larger and larger and nowhere close to nowhere close to zero so uh, why because uh, we are looking at this limit of sn and if this limit has to exist then the changes in the values of sn has to get smaller and smaller. It has to it has to stabilize after some point. It has to get more and more stable. So, but if it if this is getting more and more stable, it means that the differences uh, in, in the following two terms are getting smaller and smaller. Between meaning a n is tending to zero. So, if you can show that a n is not tending to zero, you can immediately say no. The series is is diverging. Yeah. So otherwise, some a n diverges. So uh, this is some kind of like like the, the easiest the easiest uh, test. Um, and if you definitely if you definitely check that uh, at the first, then you start to to work on some some uh, problem like this. Okay, so um, we've already we've already derived. Um, some like uh, useful useful formulas, but so uh, let's let's try to apply them to some uh, more interesting problems. So consider uh, some one over n. Consider harmonic series. Uh, so I already told you that this um, this series uh, diverges. So we can can take a look how to how to show it, but. Um, First, uh, let us check whether uh, we couldn't we couldn't use, for example, ratio test. Yeah. So, or, or or we can actually we haven't seen a root test yet, so so we can can use it now. Uh, so uh, it's uh, slightly harder to to use here, but like, we will work around it. So. So we need to calculate a limit for n tending to infinity 1 over n, which is exactly 1 over n root of n, and uh, in limit. And um, so this this thing here is is a known known limit, which is going to 1. So our answer is that, that it's one and we don't know anything um, it's actually it's actually a ni nice thing to, to prove that this is uh, this is uh, tending to one but it's it's not very not very difficult but it takes it takes uh, some time but maybe maybe we can we can show it sometimes sometimes uh, in the future next time but uh, Okay, let us believe it. Let believe it now. Or can you can you sorry show test to to check whether we are right here or not? Mm. So we don't know anything about harmonic series, uh, but we can prove it in in this way. Like imagine that we we write uh, the terms like this. Uh, sorry, one over four plus one over fifth plus one over six plus one over seven plus one over eight. Uh, other terms. Okay, so and you take the first term and uh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, let me take the first two terms. Yeah, and uh, so these uh, two terms are at least together two third. Okay. Mm. Or maybe maybe let, let me do it. Uh, sorry, I know I will do it in, in an easier way. Um, okay, so let me take the first term. This term is at least one half. Okay. Well, it's not very hard counting. 
yeah so um, okay so uh, now um, now we will to take uh, two more terms and these uh, two terms are at least 2 over 4 yeah, each of them is at least 1 over 4 because like uh, each of them is larger and so so we can take it like this but this is nothing else than 1 over 2 uh, now we can take the first four terms and all of them are larger than 1 over 8 and we have four of them so this is at least 4 over 8 which is 1 over 2 yeah so now we will take eight terms yeah like this ne eight next terms and they will be at least 8 over 16 and then we take 16 terms and at least 16 over 32 so always you get at least one half so there's one half plus one half plus one half and so on like uh, the groups we are summing together are getting larger and larger but we always have enough number because we have infinite series and we get as high as as we need so uh, after some time we will get higher than million after some time we will get higher than than 10 to 10 uh, and, and so on and so so this this is this implies that sum 1 over n diverges, it's uh, equal to plus infinity. And uh, so I will, I will show you one more proof of, of this, so if you, if you don't um, believe me uh, that this, this will work, you can still see, see some other other proof, but um, let me give you one more example. One over n squared. So instead of of taking uh, taking the first power, we take the second power. So with the series are the terms one plus one over four plus one over nine plus one over sixteen, and, and so on. So can we can we use some kind of like clever method like before, and um, and the uh, answers is uh, maybe a little surprisingly that no that this this thing already converges actually we can we can sum it exactly uh, using uh, quite a nice uh, tricks um, tricks uh, for example there are like many proofs for that but uh, I know one proof using using Fourier series uh, it's quite nice and we we'll definitely uh, get to it in the future but uh, we obtained quite surprising result that this is nothing else than p squared over 6 and who would expect such a number there and um, like similarly all, all these these things 1 over n cubed, 1 over n to 4 and so on, all of them are converging yeah. and uh, it's, it's not very hard to see because like the, these numbers are getting smaller and smaller so they are dominated already by 1 over n squared uh, but maybe what's, what's interesting here is that if you consider 1 over n to n to k for some natural number k, then if k is even, then we know the we know the sum exactly, but uh, for k old, it is uh, not known. It's an open problem whether the sum is even. Uh, ra uh, some rational or some irrational number. No one knows how to how to sum it. No one knows what what is the answer. Yeah, so um, it's quite quite surprising that one one would think that that something like this has to be known. But, but no, no one one knows. And if you would be able to to come with some answer, you would you would almost surely become become famous. Um, but we we are not going we are not going to talk about uh, how to sum these things exactly now. But so so what about what about things between like one over n to n one point five uh, and after some some work we can show that it converges.
and what about 1 over n to 1.25 and again it converges and so on so even what, what we can derive here is that 1 over n plus 1 plus epsilon is already enough to converge so take any any larger larger power than 1 plus epsilon and you will be already converging so so the, the value 1 is exactly the border between convergence and divergence yeah so we will have we have the towing theorem that 1 over some 1 over n2 alpha converges if and only if alpha is larger than 1 and we are going to pr to prove this theorem here and now and so what we are going to use is something uh, called uh, Cauchy's uh, condensation test, uh, which I consider to be to one of the one of the nicer nicer tests. So, um, so what we are going to do is to pick only some of the terms of the sequence, but we will pick them with uh, higher higher value with higher fate. Yeah, so we will pick only only some of the terms and we will take, pick uh, terms of mm, uh, which are uh, powers of, of uh, two. Uh, but uh, like basically basically I think for the for the condensation test as we will see it doesn't matter. But we will pick only some of the terms but we will pick them with higher and higher weight. And the thing is that we will have obtain uh, two series one origin series like this yeah and the other other series which is uh, which contains only some of the terms but they are multiplied by some weight and what we will, what we would like to do is that this origin series converges if and only if this new series converges and to make our situation easier what we would like to uh, to, uh, do, to get this series which will be much simpler to solve than the series before so um, we need we need some uh, we need to know something more about uh, the series a n so if we only need if we need to consider whether the series n converges or diverges it means that terms a n tend to infinity so they are getting smaller and smaller, closer to zero. But the thing is that, that they can do do things like this. And then, if if you would um, pick uh, some some term like this as, as a representant, you couldn't know how big how big weight uh, should you should you give to this to this term because you don't know how large is it compared to the to the other terms around. So we would like to be able to uh, be uh, somewhat certain about this. So what we want is that the terms are monotonally non-increasing. Yeah, meaning that uh, terms are not growing larger. Yeah, so a n plus one is at most as big as a n. So the series is going close and closer to zero like this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now in our case, uh, we are going to to pick every uh, like only uh, the terms uh, which are powers of, of two. So we will only take a look at a zero, a one, a two, a four, a eight, a sixteen, a thirty two, and so on. So it's. Uh, like we have much much uh, smaller number of uh, much smaller number of terms instead of summing all terms like this we will only sum one uh, or zero one two four eight sixteen and so on and we will only pick a small number of the terms and so now the question is uh, how to how to uh, how to choose the weights that we would we would know something like this. So uh, what we are going to do is we are going to choose weights which are two to n. Yeah. So if we want to sum a n, then it's exactly the same as summing two to n, which is which is the weight. This here is the weight. 